Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, An Innovative Approach to Reducing Length of Stay in Shelters, presented by Allison Kleiber from the Wisconsin Humane Society. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us. My name is Kristen Elrod. I'm the Communications Specialist here at the Foundation, and I'll also be your host for today's event. I would now like to introduce Deb Fair, our Executive Director, to tell you more about Pedigree Foundation and the topic of today's webinar. Hi, everyone. Some of you may be familiar with Pedigree Foundation, and some of you may not. We were established in 2008 as a corporate private foundation with the mission of helping more dogs in need find loving homes. And that's basically done through our grants program. But we also have a, another initiative that's a big part of our purpose, and that's to share best practices that we hear about through our grant recipients. So today we're gonna hear from Wisconsin Humane Society, they received a 2016 innovation grant and a 2017 program development grant for the Benchwarmers program. We're really excited to have Allison Kleiber from Wisconsin Humane Society here to share their learnings. But before we do that, I'd like to have Kristen walk you through some of the details for our webinar. Thanks, Deb. So, before we get started, here are a couple of housekeeping slides just to help you understand how to participate in today's webinar. This first slide that we have up is a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something like this on your own computer in the upper right corner. It's a rectangular vertical box. You're listening in using your computer's speaker system by default right now. If you would prefer to join over the phone instead, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You just dial that in and you will then be using your telephone for your speakers. You will also have the opportunity to submit chat questions for today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane on the control panel. You can send those in at any time during the presentation or after and I will collect them and will address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. There's also a little orange arrow box up at the top of your tool panel you can click that to hide your tool panel whenever you'd like in case it's taking up any portion of your screen. I'm now going to turn this presentation over to our presenter for today, Allison Kleiber. Okay, just get my slides here. All right, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about our bench warmer program. Um, as I said, my name is Allison Kleibor and I'm the Director of Animal Sheltering for the Wisconsin Humane Society. And I'm so excited to share our bench warmer program with you today. But before we get started, I just wanna send a tremendous thank you to the Pedigree Foundation uh, for supporting this program. The bench warmer program helps save hundreds of dogs every year so thank you so much, Pedigree, for your support. As we get started today, I want to give a little bit of a roadmap uh, for where we're headed. I'll tell you a little bit about myself, our organization, introduce you to the nuances of the Benchformer program, give you a history of the program, where we started, where we are today, what we learned along the way, how we use data to drive decisions, and the results of the program over the last four years. So a little bit about me. I've been with the Wisconsin Humane Society since 2007. And in my current position as the Director of Animal Sheltering, I oversee all animal care, client services, foster, transfer, and veterinary support functions for our five sheltering locations. I'm currently working on a master's degree in shelter medicine. I have attended animal cruelty investigation trainings, as well as animal control and humane officer trainings. I'm a certified animal welfare administrator and a certified humane officer in the state of Wisconsin. I live outside of Milwaukee with my husband, three kids, three dogs, and our cat. I love data, I love learning, and I love dogs with really short legs. And now a little bit less about me and more about our organization, let me share with you the incredible history of the Wisconsin Humane Society. We were founded in 1879, um, and we have been saving the lives of animals for nearly 140 years. WHS is a 501c3 organization and operates animal shelters in Milwaukee, Ozaki, Racine, Door County, and Brown Counties in Wisconsin. We also 
uh, operate a spay neuter clinic in West Dallas, just outside of the city of Milwaukee. And for those of you that may not understand the geographic spread of Wisconsin, from north to south, from our most northern campus to our most southern campus, it's about a three hour drive. Um, we are a, a private nonprofit organization who receives no government funding, and we serve about 40,000 animals each year. This includes animals coming into our shelter, own animals seeking services through our spay neuter clinic, classes, uh, vaccine clinics, pet food bank, and we host, um, we are home to the state's largest wildlife rehabilitation program. We have a shelter intake of about 17,000 animals, and we are incredibly fortunate to have built an amazing foster network that helps us support over 3,000 animals in foster each year. As the largest shelter in the state of Wisconsin, WHS was a pioneer in positive open adoption starting in the 1990s. We look for ways to make matches happen, not to prevent them. And WHS also paved the way for waived fee adoptions for adult cats, doing so since 1999. Our team prides themselves on using an open approach that sends animals into great families quickly, allowing us to serve more animals. On average, our dogs are available just two days before finding home, and that number for cats is about three and a half days. At the Wisconsin Humane Society, we have a strong organizational culture of compassion, respect, professionalism, and innovation. All of these values are, were critical in bringing the bench, bench warmer program to life. The value of positive approach allows us to frame decisions from a place of trust and support for our community. Compassion, respect, and kindness shape the way we interact with each other and others, both two-legged and four-legged. The same compassion, respect, and kindness we show animals in our care is expected in the way that we treat our clients. Professionalism may seem pretty boilerplate. However, we are intentional about this in the way we run our organization. We have high expectations for ourselves and others, and we approach our work in a positive way. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly to today's conversation, innovation. I love this organizational value because it challenges us to continue to improve, to take the next step, to rethink old ways, to be creative and flexible. It's through all these values, but especially innovation, that the Bench Warmer program took root. Diving a little deeper on innovation. I sometimes think the word gets used uh, in ways that create an expectation around these brilliant, earth-shattering ideas. And while those moments are awesome when they happen, we're talking about something a little bit more foundational. Starting with asking yourself why and see where that takes you. For example, when our president and CEO first came to WHS, we are in the process of reading a voicemail recording um, each morning of all the available animals for the day their name, their age, their breed, for cats, dogs, and our small animal friends. We were doing this daily. And after the first adoptions, the listing was out of date. It was taking us anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes on most days. And when we messed up or stumbled over our words, we had to start again. When our president and CEO learned of this practice, she said in an information-seeking, non-judgy way, why do we do that? The response was because we had always done it that way. This challenged us to rethink this process. That was no longer a valid answer. We needed to know why we did things. So our culture of continuous improvement pushed us to re-examine and eventually discard this practice in favor of more impactful projects. So when I say start with why, it's because you might be surprised with the answer. As we talk about bench warmers, the question became, why do we launch frequent adoption promotions to get long stay animals out of the shelter? For WHS, innovation isn't an end goal, it's a journey. A journey with lots of questions and adjustments along the way. Not to get it perfect, but to keep getting better with each iteration. A culture of innovation means things change often, and that means we need to focus on creating a culture where change is welcomed and expected. That doesn't make change easy. Change is hard. Sometimes it's really hard. But change promotes growth and understanding. It's necessary. This field is dynamic and there are new amazing ideas generated daily. So as an organization, we look for ways to manage that change. And here's what change management looks like for us. For every process we revisit, we look for the small wins, the low hanging fruit, if you will, 
those next steps that help get us to the next level. We envision what it'll look like when we're successful and when we set goals to get us there. We create a plan with small achievable steps to help us build momentum and generate buy-in. And we communicate with stakeholders early, often, and then do it some more because you can never communicate enough around change. When we implement the change, we measure the impact. Sometimes that's easier to quantify than others, but we still look to measure it. We show people it's working or not and keep moving forward and do it all again. This is the journey that brought, the bench for, brought about the bench former program. I know that was a lot of information, but it's essential to set the foundation before we dive deep into the nuances of our bench former program. Because as you've heard, these organizational values help shape the decisions we make as an organization. Now that we've set the foundation, let's dive into the profile of our bench warmers. So what is a bench warmer? A bench warmer is a dog who is a longer than typical length of stay on our adoption floor. As you heard me mention earlier in the presentation, through data collection and analysis, we know that our average length of stay on the adoption floor is two days for dogs. This allowed us to determine a length of stay threshold or bright line for our bench warmers. This bright line is 10 days uh, for available for adoption. Any dog who has been available for at least 10 days of, of adoption becomes a bench warmer. It's important to stress that this is adoption length of stay only, as we know there are many factors that can contribute to the overall length of stay for an animal, such as stray hold time, illness, behavior modification, et cetera. Our bench warmers often, but not always, have behavior and medical conditions that may be putting them on the slow track to finding a home. By making them a bench warmer, they become a part of a, an elite group of dogs who are ready to get back in the game. Once a dog becomes a bench warmer, meaning they've been available for adoption for 10 days, we feature them in the following way. The word bench warmer is added to their name in our shelter software system, which populates on our website and is seen on our adoption floor. A memo is added to their animal record in our software, which also populates on the website. I'll show you a sample memo uh, in just a moment, and this helps explain just what it means to be a bench warmer. And lastly, the dog's adoption fee is reduced to $25. We can then feature these dogs as individuals through social and traditional media. And if we have a number of bench warmers available at one time, we also have the opportunity to feature the entire program, highlighting everyone at once. And here's an example of the type of memo we put in um, an animal's profile when they move to a bench warmer. This is Betty, one of the many wonderful animals available for adoption at the Wisconsin Humane Society. Despite Betty's great looks and lovable personality, she hasn't found her forever home. She's become a bench warmer. To get Betty back in the game and into a home, we've reduced her adoption fee to just $25. We know she'll make a great addition to someone's family, so stop in today. We try to tailor those memos to the individual personalities of each dog. However, most of the messaging is pretty standard. On the next slide, um, this is a screenshot from our website that shows how we make bench warmers stand out in a crowd. Um, so that bench warmer um, tag that goes behind their last name, or behind their name, um, indicates that they are part of the bench warmer program and prompts people to click on their individual pictures to learn more. So those red arrows there are pointing to the three bench warmers in this picture. Um, and we also, when uh, time permits, create short videos of these dogs showcasing their adorable faces. Um, you'll also see that we featured them as staff picks, which is when a staff member selects them, takes a picture with them, and tells the world via our website why they're so amazing. Um, and we are so fortunate to have a few professional photographers who donate their time to getting these amazing images of these special dogs. Once a client clicks on an individual animal's picture, that brings that person to the individual animal's page. Um, and for both thesis here, you can see that he is a bench warmer. Um, he has the tag behind his name. He has the memo um, under on his profile page. And then his adoption fee has also been reduced to $25. So 
now that you have a little background on what the bench war what a bench warmer is, I'm going to share some history about how we got started back in 2014. Like is a common across many shelters in August, our shelter was packed. In particular, we had a number of dogs with really long length of stays on the adoption floor, weeks if not months. This was unusual given our average two days uh, in adoption, so we took an extra look at our data to, de to determine where the bottleneck was. And we identified 13 dogs with available length of stay over 21 days, including handsome Argon pictured, pictured here. So we pulled a small group together and decided to launch what was intended to be a targeted adoption program for those 13 dogs, reducing their adoption fees to just $25. This cycle was pretty typical for us. See a problem, typically around population, react to it, typically run an adoption program, solve the problem, population goes down, and then wait for the next problem to come our way. We were excellent at putting out the fires, but didn't think we had time to prevent them. Spoiler alert, we were wrong. We launched the prom promotion in August of 2014 and surprised ourselves. Not only did the community love it, but the dogs got adopted just by reducing their adoption fees and letting people know about it. We quickly realized that this strategy had staying power. What if we made a bench warmer program and put dogs into it as needed? The graphics could remain the same, no need for a PR push, and the team could implement it with ease. It was like we discovered fire. As much as I love a good adoption uh, pro promotion, they are a ton of work. They are often short term, take time for the community to catch on, which means if you're responding to a problem, it's not always a quick fix. Plus, you're taxed to come up with the next creative idea. Not to mention, when those promos do catch on, people come to the shelter, and if your shelter is anything like ours, we don't have a whole lot of extra staff just laying around. So this proactive, programmatic approach allowed for more control on all sides, and the community loved it. We realized that using strategies like bench warmers allowed us to break the reactionary cycle in favor of a more proactive, ongoing program. I mentioned that perfection is not our goal. Um, remember how I said we didn't have time to be planful? To look at the data and anticipate our needs, well, we were wrong. We had time. We just weren't spending it on reacting. We were spending it on reacting to the crisis of the moment versus planning for the next and planning for the next promotion. So by moving away from reactionary promotions in favor of strategies based on anticipated needs, we saved time and we found more impactful ways to use that finite resource of time. These strategies may not be perfect on the outset, but that's okay. Learn and refine along the way. Benchwarmers also encouraged us to further explore variable pricing as a strategy to respond to those ebbs and flows in population across species. We also found that our community loves rooting and adopting the underdog. So I mentioned that perfection isn't our goal, but we refine as we go. Here's a little timeline of the adjustments we made to our adoption, or our bench warmer program over the last four years. The program initially set the bar at available length of stay at 21 days on the adoption floor. And in August 2014, it was launched as a promotion for those individual dogs. By September 2014, we decided to keep the bench warmers, um, but make it a program for animals to enter into over time. The 21 day threshold was still in place. By January of 2015, we decreased that threshold from 21 days to 14. And by November of 2016, thanks to the Pedigree Foundation Innovation Grant, we were able to move from 14 to 10 days. And 10 days is where we're at today, which is still five times uh, longer than our, our average. As a result of our bench warmer program, I'm happy to say we've broken free from our reactionary adoption promotion cycle in favor of a data-driven process that still allows us to make adjustments over time. And we still do the occasional adoption promotion, but they are fewer and farther between. We currently take the approach of assessing our data, looking to identify where those bottlenecks are occurring in our operations, and creating strategies to unhinge that bottleneck. 
We can then implement the strategy, monitor it for impact, and repeat the process. So why does this process work? Three points. First, it's rooted in data. Second, it's supported by our organizational philosophies. And third, it's consistent and easily understood by our community. And I'm gonna take uh, the rest of the time that we have today to go through these points individually. It all starts with knowing your data. So that's where we're gonna start too. Yes, it can be intimidating and it takes time to understand. And most importantly, it's only as good as the data entry being captured. So I'm not gonna lie. It requires effort, but the results are worth it. Data can be illuminating and compelling. If we had not looked at our data back in 2014, we wouldn't have known what our normal available length of stay was, and then we wouldn't have been able to identify those dogs who were significantly off the mark and needed our help. It was only after assessing our data that we could make decisions on strategies to address this bottleneck. Two. This works for us because our organizational philosophy acknowledges our community as an essential partner in this work, and we have to trust them. Reducing or waiving adoption fees requires trust. Trust that people are good, and those coming to us seeking animals need and want our support in doing the best they can for them. This philosophy is what we refer to as people-centered sheltering. Despite the reduced adoption fees for these dogs, we treat those interested in adopting just as we would any other adopter. We understand that clients come from diverse backgrounds with different perspectives and experiences that are often different from ours. That doesn't make them wrong. That makes them different, and different is okay. It's our job to meet people where they're at and offer support in making a good match. Note I didn't say the best match or a perfect match, because on 17,000 animals a year, we cannot chase perfection. The pursuit of perfection would mean increasing length of stay and either reducing the number of animals we serve or packing them in the shelter faster than we can get them out, compromising the care we can provide. We are firm believers that good homes are great. We also know that people who want animals will find a way to get them. We focus on creating a relationship that, with clients that last longer than the trip to the shelter. And in the meantime, Help, animal, help ensure the animals they get are altered, vaccinated, safe, and come with support. So we, work, so we work to make the adoption process easy, fun, and accessible. This means we work to remove barriers that may otherwise prevent someone from adopting, like adoption fees. We often see the adopters of bench warmers buying supplies, treats, toys in our retail store to further support their new companion. When we talk about reducing or waiving adoption fees as a strategy to optimizing length of stay, we often get questions about returns. So I do wanna take a moment here to just talk about how we approach them. For us at WHS, we're okay with returns. We acknowledge that sometimes things just don't work out and that's okay. We choose to view them as a positive. The client trusted, enough, trusted us enough to bring that animal back so that we could support both the animal and that individual further. Returns are an opportunity for us, an opportunity to learn more about that animal and that client to set them both up for success in the future. Third, this program works because it's consistent. The community knows what to expect. They aren't waiting for the next adoption promo to launch. We don't have to swing staff to respond to those busy promo days either. Having a bench warmer program gives us flexibility uh, for other dogs who have unique challenges too. We can always make a, a dog a bench warmer a little earlier, no special promo needed. Overall, this program works because we know that if a dog is available for 10 days or more, they're a bench warmer and it's our job to get them back in the game and the community knows the dog needs their support too. So now that we've covered all of that, I get to share the fun part with you, the results of the bench warmer program at the Wisconsin Humane Society. Our shelter population now has an instant relief valve for long stay dogs. We have a strategy for getting those hard to place pups out of the shelter quickly and into awesome, amazing homes that celebrate their birthdays like the dog on the left. Additionally, our shelter intake 
uh, as shelter intake changes, we find ourselves keeping overall length of stay low, despite having fewer puppies and more adult dogs with behavior and medical issues in the mix. And our return rate has remained flat despite reduced adoption fees. We have not seen an increase in animals coming back to us. And we haven't needed an overnight adoption promotion to respond to the fluctuations in our population in quite some time. So we're well rested, like the dog on the right. And as the last series of photos have illustrated, this program has helped find happy homes for 615 dogs since 2014. And their adopters love sharing their stories. Our Facebook page is filled with them. Including the dog who started it all, Argon, who lives here, who's pictured here with his dad and visits the shelter often. Thank you so much for allowing me to share our Bench Warmer program with you. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Allison. We're now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. Also, as I have on this screen, feel free if you come up with a question after the presentation today to email either Allison, Deb, or myself with any questions you may have and we'll get back to you. Um, I actually had a question to start off with, Allison. Um, you mentioned during your presentation that you have a professional photographer who donates their time to take pictures of your bench warmers and i was just wondering how much of an impact you think that has on your program because that's something that we see that's a huge success for many rescues so i was just wondering how much of an impact you think that is so that maybe the attending shelters who might not have a professional photographer doing so might see the benefit in that Absolutely. Those photos are incredible, and they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and our bench warmers illustrate that. Um, we're so fortunate to have those photographers donating their time, um, and it's a way to capture the animals kind of in a, in a relaxed setting where they can be themselves. Um, we also try and get little videos um, interacting with people so that our potential adopters can see them interacting with another person and kind of put themselves in their shoes. Um, we also do the staff picks for that reason as well, but quality photos are amazing and they are worth the investment. And if you can find somebody in your community who even has a high res resolution camera, um, I mean, it is life changing literally for many animals. Thanks so much. That's been our experience as well. It just seems like a great way for potential adopters to see more of the dog's personality. And especially with the videos, I think that's another great idea because that really shows how they interact with others. So I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, we also have a few questions that have come in from attendees. Uh, the first one is for your reduced adoption fee of $25, is that something that your system automatically changes once you label them as a bench warmer? Or is that something that you or staff have to manually change? I wish I could say it was automated, um, but it is something that is, is manually changed by staff. Um, so staff are going in, putting the memos in, going in and adjusting the adoption fees, and then also reprinting um, any sort of signage that would be on the animal's uh, adoption suite. Um, so it reflects the most recent changes. Um, it, would, it, it then feeds beautifully onto our website automatically, but it does require a manual start. Okay, uh, there's another question asking how your adoption fees compare between dogs of an older age or puppies, whether, you know, it costs more for a puppy, even in the bench warmer program, or how you decide that, and also whether you have ever reduced a dog's adoption fee to zero. Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, so we talk in terms of variable pricing options. 
Um, so that's what it's advertised as a range, a variable range on our website. We don't necessarily um, have, at least uh, to our public, a fee structure by age, um, because we know dogs are individuals and there's a lot that goes into it. Um, we have uh, had puppies that are bench warmers. Um, they may have had some behavioral issues that kept them in the shelter a little bit longer than was typical. Um, but there isn't an age qualification to be a bench warmer. Um, so we can have puppies in that program, um, although it's kind of rare. Um, as internally, we know that on average, our puppies are around $309. Um, our range goes from 25 to 449. Um, and there's a lot of factors that play into that, whether that's age, behavior, um, just overall profile of the animal. Um, but it's been really helpful to talk about it in a variable range that gives us flexibility to set the fee at what we feel is going to be um, helpful in getting that animal into a home. As for the second question around uh, waiving fees entirely, we actually have not um, outside of a few outlier cases where we uh, reduced or waived the fees entirely and that was primarily because the adopters were taking on a, a lot for those animals medically, um, a lot of ongoing costs and so we waived the adoption fee. However, it wasn't advertised. Um, that was a surprise to them at the, at the time of adoption. Okay, great, thank you. Um, the last question that we have is how, you mentioned in your presentation as well that you do have a foster network. So how does that play into the Benchformers program? Sure. Um, so, ben, well, Benchformers primarily focuses on adoption length of stay. Our foster program is essential in our overall kind of flow through the shelter. Um, we view foster homes as an extension of, of the shelter environment. They are equivalent, equivalent of a kennel, I guess. They're very flexible kenneling. Um, and so, when we have animals who come in um, that do require more support or are going to stay in the shelter, for a longer period of time than is typical. The only way for us to support that is to find alternate alternate ways of, of housing so that we're not packing, that, packing animals into the shelter. And fosters are instrumental in allowing us that flexibility. Um, they take animals out of the shelters. So not only is it physical kennel space that they're opening up for us to support additional animals, but being in a foster home versus being in a shelter is a world of difference for most dogs. Um, it's, it, and we learn a ton about those dogs when they are in foster, um, how they're adapting to a home environment, any behavior challenges that we need to work through or disclose to the adapter. Um, so fosters are an extension of our shelter work and we treat them um, as if they're a sixth sheltering location. Thank you. Yeah, foster programs are another one that we see a lot of success with. So thank you for speaking to how that plays into the Benchformers program. I believe that's all the questions we have. So please feel free, as I said, to email any of us at the emails on your screen if you have any questions that you'd like to ask us after this. And thank you so much to our presenter, Allison Clybor from Wisconsin Humane Society. And thank you to everyone there for implementing this very innovative and successful program. And thank you to everyone who attended today's webinar. You will all receive a follow-up email with a recording of this presentation within 24 to 48 hours. And you can feel free to share it with whoever you would like. And on behalf of the Pedigree Foundation and our presenters, thank you all for joining us and have a great rest of your day.